Shalom Kharim, I'm Stephen Ben Danuni. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have on with us today Aaron Murray. Aaron is our webmaster as well. Aaron actually uh, does the uh, noteworthy news. It's on our website as well as his own. And Aaron, if you would please bring us up to date with the news that is going on around the world. Hello. Uh, today I went through the news and uh, kind of highlighted a few things that we see around the world. One of the main stories that we can say that affects the most people, the Apple uh, has installed security back doors on 600 million iPhones and iPads, um, claims a security researcher. So we we have a little bit of uh, actual fact here uh, saying that there is a security hole in the iPhone, iPhone and iPad devices across the world. So we have to realize that when we're on our phones and such, we're being listened to one way or another. So it is something that we all need to be aware of. Um, let's see, the, uh, in Washington, there has been the largest fire that they have ever had uh, statewide. Um, but they're expecting some wetter and cooler weather at, that, at this time, and so it's helping them get uh, this fire under control. There's been over, far, over 150 homes destroyed in this fire. Is that Washington, so asking, Washington right. State? Is that on the coastline or Washington is that more inland? Yeah, that's right. It's, um, I'm not sure exactly the location of the fire. I didn't see that in the article uh, right up top. But um, it, it's 150 homes. You know, it, it's the biggest fire they've ever had. So, you know, need to lift them up in prayer. And uh, then there's, uh, I'm looking at China. There's parts of the northern Chinese city have been quarantined after the state media, media said a man there died of the bubonic plague. So we've had the problem of the plague show up here in uh, Colorado, I believe it is. And now there's a plague showing up here in China. So instead, in Colorado, we have four, four cases of it, I believe it is. And now in China, they're quarantined a city of 180,000 people for just one case, at least that's what's being reported. So we don't know exactly what's going on with this, but we're seeing cases of the bubonic and pneumonic, which is what we saw here in America, plague show up here and there. So we're keeping an eye on that. Um, well, imagine what's going to happen, yep. uh, Aaron, when we have uh, the borders open uh in, in the United States on the southern end there for the influx of illegal immigrants, not just from Mexico, but they're coming from Central America all the way yeah. up, uh, you know, pe these these young people as well, not just young people, but gang members and so yeah. forth, as Anita Fuentes yeah. uh, pointed out to us uh, in last night's news. Uh, they're, they're coming up, gang members, people with all types of, of diseases and no telling what they are. And, and of course, you know, my heart goes out to those that are sick because, you know, God is, uh, you know, Yeshua said, by his stripes we are healed. And we do believe that 100%. But in many cases, it's not people that are, that are even desirous maybe of that. They're just, they're just funneling them in. And of course, the Vatican is really for it. They told the United States that you should open your borders and, and with open arms and welcome the people that are coming in. And of course, we see $3.7 billion dollars was given to the Catholic churches and some of the Baptist churches in Texas uh, long before it was going to happen, earlier yeah. this, uh, this year, and we're told to expect it to happen. Uh, so this has been pre it's, it's premeditated, uh, uh, as, as also as the former uh, Border Patrol agent, Zach Taylor, mentioned, uh, this is an A- uh, what is it called, a asymmetrical war or something like that. Basically what he's talking about when he says that is that they're bringing the enemy within in order to destroy the country from within rather than making an onslaught in, uh, land invasion. Uh, so if you weaken the country, uh, then that's exactly what's going to happen. Anyway, Aaron, I'm sorry, brother, continue on. Yeah, on that note, the uh, I'm looking at a story. I'm going to be doing a little more research on this particular point. Um, uh, the headline is, a Border Patrol agents, uh, UN taking control of American southern border. And it basically goes into a few things. And I'm going to look more at, uh, 
look into this one deeper and see what I can get out of here and do a little more research. But yeah, our, our, our southern border is... There, I can't remember the name of the guy. Uh, it was a government official, uh, I believe it was in 2012, said, and this is a quote, uh, well, paraphrase, I should say, that the United States southern border is now Guatemala. This was a state official in a speech saying, stating on the record that the United States southern border is now Guatemala, if you can believe that. My gosh. Definitely, I'd like to get the name of the individual, the government, if we, if we are able to get that. I know the reason I say that too, Brother Aaron, is uh, when we did the video the other day about the uh, the funds, uh, people, Jewish people that I know of personally, two of them individuals that I know, uh, that have that tried to wire money into Israel and the banks refuse to let them do it. And of course, I've caught a lot of flack, uh, people saying that we're trying to sensationalize. And that's one of our big issues here. I refuse to sensationalize news, but I yep. only report what I'm actually being told. Now, um, in saying that, uh, before we go into that particular issue there, in fact, hopefully we'll have Rabbi uh, James come on uh, this evening, hoping to have him come on. Uh, he's agreed to come on as well, that this actually happened to him. Uh, but in stating that we don't like to sensationalize, I also got criticism about uh, from, from actually a Jewish lady. She, she sent me this message on Facebook. Now, I'll show the message on the screen, but I'm not going to uh, reveal her identity because I don't think she meant it uh, in any disregard. But she messaged yep. me, but also messaged me in a way to where I could not respond, and neither could I find her account when I looked her up by name and yet did it on Facebook. It really seemed kind of mm -hmm. odd. She claimed to be Jewish, but... In, mm -hmm. in her response, she was saying that I am sitting there trying to uh, sensationalize it, basically, and make it look like that there was that this was something that Obama had done to stop the flights from America, and it was only done because the FAA is trying to keep the people safe here. Now, oddly enough, today, and I'm going to play the clip for you here in just a few moments here, Wolf Blitzer on CNN News He's actually asking the former uh, mayor of New York, does he think that the United States is doing this for political purposes? And yeah, of course, yeah. as, as Mayor Bloomberg, and he was, he got infuriated with Wolf Blitzer for even suggesting the comment, but yet Mayor Bloomberg was, is, was before the comment came up, was a staunch supporter for the Jewish people and their right to protect themselves. And he flew there in defiance to FAA orders yeah to show that Israel was safe to fly in and out of. And then Wolf Blitzer comes back and he states, he says, you know, hey, wait a minute. You know, he says, the, the Israeli people are thinking this is being done intentionally, not just me. Yeah. But point in case, we want to be able to name sources. And then uh, Senator, um, Senator Cruz, yeah. I, thank you. Right here. Senator Cruz came out publicly today and stated that he believed that it was a political move against Israel, and that's what they yeah. were doing. Uh, so, hey, what can I say? Uh, there, there's yeah. facts in what we're saying. We're not the only ones. We didn't fall off the pumpkin wagon, so to speak. Anyway, brother, continue yeah. on. Yeah, this uh, story about the uh, Israel flights being canceled to cripple uh, Israel started with Aaron Klein of uh, World Net Daily. Uh, he start he did that article. Uh, let's see, yesterday. Um, let's see, what did he say? Uh, you, the the headline is U.S. banning flights to press Israel into ceasefire. So we have this as a site, uh, and that is what Ted Cruz echoed today. So he went off uh, on that particular point and made it a very large political uh, move. And so we're seeing the ripples of this particular uh, talking point kind of go through the uh, media right now. Well, it also shows, too, that uh, in, in doing this, what they're in essence trying to do in the first place is uh, really and truly the United States is siding with uh, Hamas. Uh, there's yeah. no there's there's no other way around this that we could say, but they're siding with Hamas. Hamas considered this a great victory for them, uh, and what do we what do we expect? Yeah. Obama is it's been reported widely enough that he is a member of the the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, he has appointed yeah. several Muslims to, to 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 his administration to his cabinet. 
uh, I mean, and, I, and it's so funny, I always get the comments sent to me or emails, you know, yeah. I didn't vote for the guy or I voted for him and now I regret it, you know, so yeah. it, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, rigged, yeah. I believe. I really believe that our, our democracy is, is just superficial. Yeah, I have these two articles here, a couple articles up here, the uh, Israel, the FAA, the FAA ban awards terror, and that's from MSNBC.com, and IsraelNationalNews.com states that Hamas claims suspended flights to Israel as a great victory. And so we're just handing them victory after victory as we refuse to stand with Israel. It's absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, let's take real quick, uh, I want to play for the people exactly the, the, the altercation that went between uh, um, Mayor Bloomberg and, uh, and as well as uh, Wolf, Wolf Blitzer. I'd like to get, let you guys see just a clip of this here for a moment. A army and an air force that knows how to fight and is out there trying to protect them and when they walk down the streets when they send their kids to school when they go to the parks when they get to a concert they feel safe if you're not if you don't feel safe here I don't know where you'd feel safe and I think the State Department is just overreacting in typical bureaucratic fashion political reasons for that that's why would you think that well, do you think it, I'm asking you that's ridiculous why would you think that it's an outrage for you to accuse of one of our I'm agencies I'm just you, asking. By, by asking the question you're implying that our government does things for political reasons and maybe every once in a while they do but it's your job to prove it just the allegation against our government I, know, I personally I take asking, as an offense no, 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 I was just asking you if you thought that there was some political motive behind the travel advisory number one, or the FAA number decision. one I wouldn't know a lot of people in Israel do you know I don't know you don't know and the other people don't know but just the the, the tone of the question of trying to create dissension it's insulting to America. What do you think? Well, when terrorists try to terrorize us, uh, the reality is that their ability is minimal, especially what the Israeli government and the army does. In Just, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, here we have Wolf Blitzer and the former mayor Bloomberg. Both of these men are Jewish to begin with, and yet um, they're... they're <laughs> I know Wolf Blitzer yeah. is under pressure, no doubt, with, with CNN, yeah. you know, that he's he's got to be non-biased, but the problem is, is CNN is actually pushing to support Hamas. And, and I get a lot of criticism yeah. as well. They say that, that I'm biased as well. I, I am. I am biased for the Jewish people. I have to admit that. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. if Israel does something wrong, I'm definitely going to say that as well. It's just like the, the, the young uh, Muslim boy that was burned and... Uh, originally, it looked like, because according to the first report, was that the father had testified that it was Arabs that picked him up, and his mother said, "No, it was Jewish yeah. boys." Uh, later, though, the Jewish the, the 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 authorities there in Israel have said that it was uh, uh, they had so so many Jewish men in custody. Uh, yeah. But then again, it's just like the same thing. Barry Barry Hamesh, yeah. Barry says that uh, Steve. He said they have no representation whatsoever. Now, they captured six boys. Three ended up being released. Uh, Barry, I don't know if he knew that at the time. But the other three have still been in, incarcerated. And Barry was saying mm -hmm. that they had no legal representation from the time they were arrested. Yeah. And the, the serious matter is, and, and Barry Chamesh, uh, or Chamesh as most people know Barry, he is an investigative journalist. He's not going to sensationalize, sensationalize it. He's very concerned at the direction Israel is headed. He knows, as I know, as Julie, uh, Giulio Miotti knows as well, their intention there is to overthrow Israel. The people of Israel have no idea yeah. that the cynical government officials in Israel, what they're intending to do. So is the escalation that's going on intentional? I think it very well could be. Uh, you know, I know it's going to be somehow, and I'm concerned, even as uh, Barry Chemesh says, yep. that they're going to, Hezbollah is going to get involved, Syria is going to get in, involved as well, yep. and uh, if we get into that, and today a sister, she, she calls me up from Panama City, and she tells me that, you know, Brother Steve, I had a dream, and in the dream, I see Israel surrounded, and she's being attacked from all different sides. She may yep. be very, yep. very, I mean, we know that's going to happen regardless, you know, we, we realize that. Anyway, I'm sorry, Brother Go right ahead. Yeah, well, brother, um, the, the way I, I see, at least personally see it right now is Israel is put in between a rock and a hard place. 
where they they realize that if they don't if they don't take care of Hezbollah as a problem right now, they're going to unite. And that will be a problem that Israel is seeing that will be down the road. And, and if they don't do something now, they probably will have a lot more casualties uh, very soon. And the, the Muslim world is uniting around Israel right now, and they're, they're trying to break down the borders and unite behind something. They're just looking for something to let, unite behind. So we see Israel right now preparing for that eventuality. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. Well, Brother uh, Aaron, it's been a pleasure to have you on tonight, and I know uh, you guys will be seeing more of Brother Aaron, uh, and we, we have a little bit of difficulty with our with our visual on, on the camera tonight, but uh, Brother Aaron was saying we have a streaming issue there, uh, but we'll be having Brother Aaron back again with us, uh, and as always, check out the website, IsraelReturns.com. Um, noteworthy news, uh, Aaron does a tremendous job uh, in keeping the website going and, and averting all of the um, disasters that the government throws our way as well. So thank you, yeah. Brother Aaron, and God bless you.